Namo Tazza Bhagavato Arado Samma Sambutaza Namo Tazza Bhagavato Arado Samma Sambutaza Namo Tazza Bhagavato Arado Samma Sambutaza I mean homage to the teacher, the Buddha, the enlightened Buddha. So what I want to do today uh, in this section is to talk about the Buddha's, uh, the depictions of the Buddha's hands. And these are used a lot in statuary that you find in uh, Buddha images, statues and pictures. To this, and they have meaning uh, in them. So um, a little bit looking into some things like this, for example, um, a book. Notes. Yoga in your hands with mudras, and in here they describe 50 different um, mudras of all different kinds that are linked with uh, yoga, mm -hmm. using them in different ways. And because we're talking about uh, teachings coming from a similar area, the northern in northern India, there are some crossovers. So interestingly, when uh, I mean when people from outside the cultures go to cultures like Thailand and, and Burma and so on and see the statues, always, almost always the, 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 uh, the, the Buddhas will have hands something like this or placing down or like this and, and those will have meanings but often we're not explained what they are, it's not always obvious. So I thought I'd just do a short section on this, the mudras or the, the Buddha's uh, hand postures and the meanings of them. Um, as far as I'm aware, so there's a very new, as a Theravada monk, you often don't get really taught this. So somebody asked me, one of the students asked uh, this question, so I've been online to do some research. And, and so it's sort of, it's not hugely in depth, but it's a little bit of, to introduce that one side of it. And also, we see many different types of Buddhas standing, sitting, reclining, uh, walking, and with the hands in different postures. And the Thai people have developed a, a, a big story about this that they all you know, they understand very well. This is a Monday, this is a Tuesday Buddha, this is a Wednesday Buddha, this is a Thursday Buddha, and so on. And they have meanings and relevance. So um, I thought just for once, at least to sort of like clarify and point out what that is. Otherwise, when you go into a, to do a meditation retreat or you enter into a temple, you're suddenly surrounded by tons of this imagery and <coughs> symbolism without really having a code for it or understanding it. So this is an image from, <coughs> just a very pleasant image to my eye, of a, um, a Buddha's hand from Tibet, this one. So I'm, I'm not a great authority on Tibetan Buddhism, but you can see just how beautiful they are. Here, so here's the original painting that um, I was sent. So this, this is what we want to, to have a good look at. The meaning of these kind of two uh, symbols. And they're two different hands. Often the two hands will be combined in different ways. One hand meaning one thing, the other man hand meaning another in some cases. So that one there, called Dhamma Chakra Mudra. Now Dhamma is the Buddha's teaching and Chakra is a wheel. So when the Buddha started the turning the wheel of the teachings, this is called the Dhamma Chakra, but in this sense, the gesture of teaching usually interpreted as the turning the wheel of law. The hands are held together, are held level with the heart. The thumbs and index form circles. So one palm facing out and teaching, and the other one facing in towards the heart, like this. And like uh, like a galactic, almost like a galaxy um, spiral here, the two hands touching on that. And in the original painting, they were touching on the one finger here, slightly different meaning. So here we have ten um, popular images of, of hands to show their meaning. And we're going to look at one of the jnanas uh, in one of the other clips on the, on the 16 jnanas called the knowledge of fear. So when we have insight into fear, um, we get um, the ability to be able to, to sustain it and know it and also subdue fear like this. So this hand gesture you see like this. For example, the Buddha was sent um, a jealous cousin of his made an elephant drunk, uh, a fierce elephant drunk, and they could be very aggressive and sent him into a very narrow um, channel, um, street, 
with walls either side, and it should have, any ordinary person it should have just crushed them uh, in its drunken stupor, and the Buddha put up two hands like this and send up loving kindness to it, and the, Buddha, and the elephant stopped and then halted and then crumpled down and then bowed to the Buddha as well. So a higher Buddha mudra, no fear. <coughs> what is a bhaya mudra? A bhaya is translated from Sanskrit as fearlessness, it's actually Pali. The abhaya mudra is made with the open palm of the right hand extending outwards at the chest level or slightly higher. If you look at this Buddha hand gesture or mudra, you will also feel the energy of protection, peace, and a strong sense of deep inner security. Uh, typically, uh, as noticed with this website, as with this, they're sort of mixing a lot of things together, like uh, astrology and feng shui and uh, Hindu um, Hinduism and many, many things. Or often in the New Age, they're sort of intercombined as well. So I might skip some of these things if they start to bringing feng shui into it, which I'm not really uh, um, conversant with. So Buddha mudra number two, jhana meditation. So as you know, like regular um, Facebookaholics like us, you know, we're all the day long with our hands and fingers doing this. I mean, it could be good. Get, it can be good to just train them to just stay like that for a while. You know, just give yourself ten minutes in that mudra, and you find out that your whole body, your whole mind settles down just from the action of taking on the hand in those positions. You can't do two things at the same time with the hands and then meditation. Like that. So that's jhana. Jhana or Samadhi Mudra is the hand gesture that promotes the energy of meditation, deep contemplation and unity with higher energy. The circling of energy created by the triangle, uh, formed when the thumbs of the two hands touch, also promotes a cleansing of any impurities on an etheric level. So it's starting to get a little bit abstract in there. <laughs> Philosophy, I don't know, but it uh, sounds good. Just by looking at this Buddha hand gesture, let alone practicing it, one can connect to the energy of deep peace and serenity. Namaskara, greeting and adoration. Nama means homage. Um, and we start the session, Namo, Taza Bhagavato, as homage to the Buddha. So Nama is a greeting and is a homage. So I'm done like that, with the two palms listening to each other against the heart. And, uh, I met people who simply only practice this. I was in Israel, and some people would sit only for hours like this, and then gradually pull their arms together, and you feel that the uh, hands are listening to each other very, very strongly. It's a very uh, unusual experience. What is Namaskara Mudra? Namaskara, or Anjali Mudra, another one, is the hand gesture that, ev that evokes greeting another being with the utmost respect and adoration for the divine in all. As you can see, the greeting is expressed in the form of prayer coming from one's heart or the third eye. The, the Namasakara Mudra can be expressed with palms at the heart level or at the forehead. Why? Because only with the heart or with a deeper spiritual insight, the third eye, can one truly see that we are all expressions of the same light. Again, they're getting a little bit new agey for me. Um, but, well intended. Buddha Mudra, Bhumi Spasa. Bhumi is the world and the earth, and Spasa, uh, witness, an inv invitation to witness. When the Buddha was challenged by Mara, he used this to summon up the wit, because the earth had been there to witness all of his previous pure actions. You know, Mara would be there going, there's no one around here, you're all alone. But the, the, the Buddha summed up and said, the earth was there. The earth saw all my actions and all my past lives, all the ways that I benefited. And, uh, <coughs> helped so many beings to summon up this merit, but he did it by doing this touching the ground, summoning the earth as witness, connecting with the earth. What is Bhumi Spasa Mudra? Bhumi Spasa Mudra is translated as touching the earth or calling the earth to witness the truth mudra. This hand gesture is always depicted with the right hand while the left hand is on the lap with the palm facing outwards. It means outwards, sometimes it's done with it like this. Bhumi Spasa Mudra is said to be Buddha's hand gesture when he achieved enlightenment. It represents unshaken strength and the truth of his commitment to liberation, which helped him overcome the darkness, Mara, challenging him right before he entered the light of wisdom and nirvana. 
But emoji number five, Varada. Compassion, sincerity, and wish granting. Varada Mudra expresses the energy of compassion, liberation, and an offering of acceptance. This mudra is made with the left hand, sorry, and most often uh, you can see it in conjunction with other mudras, such as Bhumi Sparsa or Abhaya Mudras, for example. This mudra is also called a boom granting mudra. Boom means like a, a wish fulfilling mudra because it helps bestow a specific quality of energy one might be seeking from an enlightened being. Often you can see a sacred shape, such as a mandala or an eye in the palm of the Buddha hand. And this expresses further the rarefied and powerful energy emanating from an enlightened being through his or her hands. Six, karana, banishing or expelling, expelling negativity. Karana mudra, so, right this one. And sometimes in the illustrations you see them a bit more like this, <laughs> like, like, like that kind of heavy metal thing that they do like that, but actually it's not something like that. So a bit more relaxed. Um, Karana Mudra expresses a, a very powerful energy um, which, which negative energy is dispelled. This hand gesture is also called warding off, ev off the evil. You can sense a very determined, focused energy just by looking at this hand gesture. If you have a Buddha with the Karana Mudra, be very mindful about its placement. And then they, this is more uh, Feng Shui, so I went. <laughs> and start talking about the things that are a little bit speculative and perhaps we'll see. So this one, Vajra Pradharma. So Vajra is a diamond, but they call it confidence in self. But uh, Vajra is a diamond or a thunderbolt. <coughs> Typically translated as the mudra of unshakable self-confidence. This hand gesture evokes so much more, or at least not what we usually understand as self-confidence. The first words that come to mind when looking at this beautiful Buddha gesture are, I come with peace because I am peace. It emanates a glowing river of the most beautiful golden energy, soft, kind, radiant, very healing, everlasting. I guess we can call it the gesture of confidence in the self, the real self that is one with divine energy. Uh, when this confidence is there, the heart becomes the strongest communicator. This is what this Buddha Muda evokes, strength and confidence in the heart self. I think they've elaborated a bit on their own. So believe. And Vitaka, <coughs> teaching transmission. Vitaka means lots of different things, but it also means when we start to make, when we're meditating, we start to make with the mind. This is Vitaka. Also discussion, also consideration, thought. And um, applying our thinking, so it's like, you know, like I'm doing this kind of thing, but it's like this in that case. Mm. Vitaka. So we'll see. Transmission. They call it teaching transmission, just transmitting uh, teaching. Vitaka mudra is interpreted as the hand gesture that evokes the energy of teaching and intellectual discussion or argument. It mostly feels like the transmission of a particular teaching with no words, and the circle formed by the thumb and index finger creates a constant flow of energy information. Close to a Bhaya Mudra, to this one, the energy created by this hand gesture allows for a transmission of knowledge in a protected way without being impeded by fear. So there's the fearless, and that's the Vitaka, so very close. You can see this in the Buddha, he would meet so many people who come ranting and shouting and also he would just be able to pacify them, be fearless and then teach like this. His mind would be completely unflattered by whatever abuse <laughs> would be received. Uh, in the ninth one of the ten here, Dharma Chakra, the wheel of Dharma cosmic order. So again here this is shown with two wing, the two wheels, uh, uh, two rings joined together at the tips. In that case left hand facing towards the heart and the right hand facing outwards. 
Dharma Chakra Mudra. Dharma Chakra Mudra expresses the continuous energy symbolized by a wheel, a chakra of the cosmic order. The hands are placed at the heart level with the thumbs and index fingers forming circles similar to the Chakra Mudra. The right palm faces outwards and the left one faces towards the heart. This mudra is associated with Buddha's first sermon or teaching, Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. It is often referred to as the representation of teaching about the cosmic order as coming from or through the heart center. Again, they kind of personalized them. Uh, Uttara Bodhi. This one they've got the hands um, apart from one finger like that. They also describe it as being like this as well. Uttara Bodhi. Supreme Enlightenment. The Uttara Bodhi Mudra is called the Supreme, called the Mudra of Supreme Enlightenment. This mudra is formed with both hands placed at the heart, index fingers touching and pointing upwards, the other eight fingers intertwined. It is a hand gesture that clearly evokes a sense of unshaken, shaked unity within oneself in aligning with the one source. Try holding the Uttara Bodhi Mudra for a couple of minutes and sense the subtle energy shift in your body. And this cropped up just while I was doing a, a, a search, but I, I thought it's good to include, which is this uh, one, which is on the icon of Christ in one of his talkings. And again, I, in any of the directions that this uh, discussion spins off into, like Hindu um, show, uh, the classical Indian dance, where there's a whole language and alphabet of discussions of, of, uh, of um, iconography that uh, the hands di display, of all different kinds. Um, I worked with a, with a dancer for about a year um, doing this kind of thing. So there's a huge A to Z of hands which I use, hands symbols, like a whole language. Um, with brain damaged children, there's a whole um, language of uh, deaf children, there's a whole language uh, as well. But, um, and in Christian uh, iconography, you're going to see those of them as well, in their statues and, and, and so on as well. And that's a whole sort of like elaborate subject on its own. So I'm just skimming um, past it here just to, to point out that it's uh, also found there. And that it's sort of narrowed down in the Buddha's teaching just to these few. We only we saw ten there. I think if we looked into Tibetan and probably Bhutanese, we'd see um, quite a lot more. But in the Theravada, it's just limited down to a certain amount, which is kind of enough and not too many. And it isn't really used as a meditation. Um, as much as well. Often, in um, my experience, they do spontaneously come up uh, in one thing or another. You may have been meditating for a long period and you find your hands just do something, or they'll just do something, or they'll just do something, or whatever. You know, those awakenings um, do happen, but it isn't used as a means to meditate. It just is a sort of phenomena of the life. Here are some orator's gestures, for example. Just, just about hand language and, and how universally these are often used as well. So if you look at the um, Thai tradition, this is typically what you see often in many cave temples uh, or uh, village temples um, across uh, all parts of Thailand. Um, <laughs> so this one looks like it was in Phuket, phuketbigbuddha.com. And he got eight um, Buddhas because on the Wednesday there are two uh, in this uh, here. Often surrounded by a lot of sort of money offering and donating and all kinds of um, thing, amulets and tons of things that I'm not a big fan of. So this is a bit of, you know, I've often uh, stormed past this off to my kuti to meditate, you know, about the real thing and all of that. So I'm quite interested to review now and, and have a look about the meaning of some of these things uh, too. Sunday. The Buddha has a name for Sunday, so this one would be this one here. Now what this re refers to is the Buddha standing after he had enlightened on the sitting down position. I believe this is right, but he walked uh, and then he stopped and turned back and he looked at the Bodhi tree and he stood in that position and he stood for seven days just reflecting, or well, they reflecting might be the wrong word, but absorbing the, the knowledge and the implications of what he realized. <coughs> the Buddha's name, Prat 
Tawai Natra. Tawai is to give. Pra, all of these are going to be called Pra something. Pra means excellent or venerable or reverent. And Tawai means to give. Natra, I think it's a form of protection. An open eye posture. The Buddha did the seven days with his eyes open. The Buddha stands with hands crossed over his abdomen in pensive thought. The right hand is placed over the left on the upper thigh. The enlightened Buddha thinks about his achievements and knowledge. Monday, the Buddha name for that statue, this one, Pra Ham Ya. And Ham means to stop. And Ya, it might be more. Because uh, this is, um, yeah. Pacifying the relatives. This is a standing Buddha pose with the left hand hanging down by the side. The right hand is raised at the chest, palm facing outwards in a single handed gesture. This posture represents preventing calamities, also known as pacifying the relatives. When all his relatives were going to go to war, the Buddha came amongst them and pacified them. Tuesday, Buddha's name, Pra, again excellent or, or reverend or high, uh, Pra. Sai, Saiya, uh, Saiya, Saiya. After this, also, this is if you try this, then better than doing it with a flat palm like this is to make a fist and turn your fist, and then, therefore you don't cut off the blood in the. If you do this, you cut off the blood in the, and the hand goes numb. But if you uh, make a fist and turn it, and then put that against the flat behind your ear. My experience is that you can stay there for quite a long time, like 30 minutes without any numbness. A reclining Buddha posture, Buddha lies on his right side with left arm draped along the body. So like that. And the right arm acting as a pillow propping up the head. The explanation I was told is that the heart is on that side and so you're not pushing the weight on it. Wednesday, two images that represent Wednesday that are divided into day and night according to Thai astrology. The morning is for receiving. The Buddha is standing with heels pressed together, holding an arms bowl at waist height, with both hands wrapped around it. Then the evening is for the blessed ones, this one here. He's seated to receive gifts from a monkey and an elephant. These are classic legends where the um, the uh, monkeys came out of the jungle by hundreds following their leader who was carrying a bowl of milk or cream and offered it to the respect and also the uh, chief elephant came and did the same thing or uh, gave an offering. As Buddhism teaches respect for every living thing, this posture shows the respect of all living things. Thursday, Buddhism at Buddha's name, Prasamati, meditation and the thumbs joined together there. This sitting Buddha image is one of restful meditation with legs crossed, right leg on top of the left, and both hands resting on the top, with the right hand over the left, both palms upwards. This is the perfect mental discipline. The gesture is the ultimate balance of tranquility and thought, means samatha and vipassana. It is believed that the body in this position is receptive to power and or energy to enter the body from the top of the head in the open palms. Friday, Buddha's name, and Prat Rampung. This is the name of my first temple. It's called Wat Rampung. Contemplation Rampung. The posture depicts Buddha standing by the banyan tree. So you see the, uh, this one. Banyan tree, both hands are crossed over the chest, right over left, palms facing inwards, wondering how he can explain the cause of suffering to his followers. Oh, perhaps this is the one where he was looking at the Bodhi tree. Yeah. Saturday, the one here with the uh, Nagas, the snake that came in <coughs> the head. Buddha's name, um, Pra Naga Prok, protection Thanks. by the Naga. Naga is a kind of dragon or a chief uh, snake, cobra. But a Naga is actually a celestial kind of dragon. This dramatic statue depicts Buddha sitting in meditation, protected by a cobra hood. Buddha sits cross-legged in meditation with overlapping hands, palms upwards, while Muchalinda, 
Cobra, the king of Nagas, spread his hood to protect Buddha from a rainstorm while he was in profound meditation. Whether that's um, how literal or how legendary we uh, receive it, it's a very beautiful image. One teacher pointed out there are a tribe of people called the Nagas, and in his opinion, it was the king of the Naga people who came and actually created a shelter over the Buddha. So there's something else. So you come across it sooner or later that Naga has two meanings. One is an actual human tribe of people who are still around. You can Google Naga tribe, and you'll see them walking around, they, and they're from that area, from the upper Nepal area, and they worship snakes. So, a bit of a leeway there for a, a double meaning. So I just review over the um, chakras to wind up. Dharma Chakra Mudra, and there's a few extra ones that are in here in this list. Dharma Chakra Mudra, Mudra the teaching, the uh, gesture of the uh, uh, teaching, usually interpreted as turning the wheel of the law. And the heart, and that hand is touching the middle finger there. Or like that. Vitaka Mudra, intellectual argument discussion, which the Buddha did, debate, and he uh, won, uh, was excellent in uh, debate. The circle formed by the thumb and index finger is the sign of the wheel of the law. Tarjani Mudra, threat, warning. The extended index finger is pointed at the opponent like that. So frequently the Buddha would meet people who were hot with bother and getting aggressive in it and hugely deluded in their views. And he would simply warn them like this. Because often, I mean, a Buddha is a unique thing. You know, his forces, internal forces are colossal and are not to be messed with as well. So if people didn't realize that and they would come up and they would get hoity-toity. They, could, they were in, entered into hell realms very rapidly as a consequence. And the Buddha would just warn them and say, like, prevent you from doing that, I warn you. When I'm warning you, do not, don't take it lightly. And so often that would happen in a few cases, which we can look at in another clip. Namaskara Mudra, a gesture of greeting, prayer and adoration. Buddhas no longer make this gesture because there's nothing higher than that. This is also a sign of a Buddha. He, he found there's no one worthy of that. But this is the reason that it's completely gone beyond ego and all form of conceit and pride and everything. And he was become the Lord, so everyone should respect that who hasn't reached that stage. So everybody respected to him. Bhumi Spasa Mudra, touching the earth as Gautama did to invoke the earth as witness to the truth of his words. Varada Mudra, so like this, fulfillment of all wishes and gesture of charity. That's the left hand usually. Jhana Mudra, absolute balance of meditation, relaxed in the land tips of the thumbs, fingers touching each other, depicted with a begging bowl, this is a sign of the head of an order, Apaya Mudra, gesture of reassurance, blessing and protection, do not fear, Jnana Mudra, teaching, the hand is held at chest level and the thumb and index feel again from the, the wheel of law, Karana Mudra, so this is one like this, it's not quite the right drawing, quite relaxed, not forced up like this, Gesture with which demons are expelled. Serpana Mudra. Two hands together in a gesture of sprinkling the nectar of immortality. Mudra Bodhi Mudra. Two hands placed together above the head. So this is what I've seen monks chanting they do this. Like this. Index fing fingers together and the other fingers intertwined, a gesture of supreme enlightenment. Some uh, monks chanting they do, they do this when they chant. Good, so there's me. I'm not aware yet of who I am. Good. So I appreciate your attention. I wish you all happiness through mindfulness.